Hello, everybody. Welcome into the LFC Transfer Room. I'm Jack. Delighted to be here alongside three lovely other gentlemen to discuss some Liverpool transfer news here today. Alongside Kev and Anthony, making his streaming debut with the Transfer Room. It is FJ. FJ, I'll, I'll kick you off with you. How are you doing on this lovely, lovely Tuesday? First of all, thank you for having me. First of all, thank you for having me. So, so delighted. I'm happy to be here. This is going to be a crazy, crazy live. I'm excited. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. Kev, you have the same level of energy as <laughs> Not that much enthusiasm, sadly, but I wish I did. But no, it's great to be on and great to be on with yourself, Jack, after your um, success at um, uni, mate. So, well done. I appreciate it. I appreciate oh, it. What did you study? What did you study? Uh, so I grad- I'm, I'm obviously, as you can tell from the accent, an American. Um, studied media, graduated from Indiana University here in the States, and I'll be calling... Ooh. Soccer um, is what we call it here. Football, Whoa, proper football. It? Proper football. Oh. <laughs> we'll be calling that um, first broadcast is this weekend, this Saturday. I'm okay. very excited about that. So I'll be a play-by-play broadcaster. So I'm, I'm challenging Martin Tyler within the next four years. Is the oh. <laughs> Anthony, you challenge him now, Jack. Honestly. Oh, <laughs> honestly, man. Some of those calls, I listen to him and I'm just saying, man, you're, you're a legend. A little, dull. a little dull. Anthony, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Jack. Thank you. How, how about you, Jack? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. I got some lovely people to talk about some lovely stuff. Um, so obviously, this is getting into some transfers. We've kind of been touched on the season a lot with some more recent streams, but now we're kind of really beginning to dig in to the transfer window and the optimism that can come from a brand new squad, a brand new season to come in a few months. We asked on Twitter for people to bring in their dream summer windows. You can drop them in the comments on YouTube. If you format it kind of nicely, we'll throw them up as well. Um, And kind of just chat about what we'd like to see. This is the opportunity for dreams. You know, this is going to be a a documenting in history, what we all thought we wanted right now on May 30th. And, you know, in two months from now, when none of it's happened or all of it's happened, we'll say, you know, be either very happy or, you know, very, very sad. (laughs) <laughs> so make sure if you're not already subscribe to the page, like this stream, share it, bring people in if you want to. But let's dive into things first of all. We've got this uh, lovely PowerPoint to guide us along our stream here today. Obviously, we tweeted yesterday, so make sure you follow us on Twitter for more stuff like this. Going to try and bring in content across the platforms a bit more often. We asked, "What is your dream summer?" And so it's, people were sending in their perfect Liverpool summer transfer window. Some of them were more realistic. Some of them were less realistic. And I was kind of very like loose with my interpretation of that because it's a dream. You know, we could dream that it's no such thing as unrealistic. There's no such thing. We can go for anyone. Exactly. Anyone. Exactly. No we, could, we could even get a time machine. Prime Ronaldo, Prime Messi. Just what would those like together? <laughs> you could really run it back like that. I don't know. I, I don't know if they'll. I don't know if they'll pay for it. That's know. the only factor that limits that. That's, That's the only factor. <laughs> so the first one we have to get into is from our good friend James Dean. He's hoping for an Adrian contract renewal. Now, I, James, my friend, you have some very good news from Fabrizio Romano. It looks like it's happening. I mean, Anthony, I'll, I'll toss to you first. This is likely going to happen. He's going to stay here as another third choice keeper for another year. Are you angry? And I, I don't want to use the word angry, but like, what are your kind of takeaways from him coming back for another year? I'm not angry because he doesn't play anyway, but it, it's just pointless. Like you could have gave that home that um, that squad spot to a homegrown option instead <laughs> of having this this bum. He's rubbish every yeah. single time he plays. He's rubbish. One that we concede every single time he plays as well. And he's at fault for at least one goal. The Aston Villa match. Oh, no, the Atletico Madrid match that year. We should have won the Champions League that season. And the, Oh, my God. He was awful. But he, I don't know. He, he's rubbish. He, he shouldn't be at this club anymore. I don't know why we gave him a contract last year either. Uh, thank you for the community shield. He, he got lucky Haaland was, was uh, having a bad match. And, and that's about it. He's rubbish. Get rid of him. Yeah, this if, comment. Go ahead. If Keller goes, if Keller goes does that mean he's going to be number two? I, unless you sign somebody, uh, he's the natural number two, which is a scary thought. If he's here just for the vibes, like Footy Boy says, I'm cool with that. You know, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, I like him. I like him. But Adrian, oh my God, I don't know why. Why they give him a new contract? I don't even know why. Unless they're getting him for the cheap. Or would you rather put a homegrown guy yeah. behind Anderson? And try and make him study under Allison mm-hmm. or leave an experienced guy like Adrian. Because you know, like anytime Allison can get injured, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Every time Allison can get injured, then Liverpool season, wow, because Allison is a big vital part of our team. So what, like, yeah. So if we're gonna give Adrian a contract, we're actually gonna looks like we're gonna mm-hmm. have faith in him. I, I yeah. don't know. I don't have faith in him. Kelleher, if he moves on, he didn't. We, we kind of put him in the shopping window, you know, with, with that match against Southampton, and he had an absolute clanker. His positioning on some of those goals was was quite bad. So, back if we we just kind of got to like all as a collective, just pray that Allison never even sneezes, like just <laughs> always fine, and it'll be good. Kev, Adrian, for you, bad signing. You're okay with it? Where you kind of land on that? It's a typical. Kidney blow to the start of the transfer window that Liverpool fans have come to expect him. Um, you know, it's us, it's us down, get us down on our knees, crying our eyes out, and then lift us up with some confidence like like today has. So you know, it's I actually saw it coming. I actually thought it. I I hate the fact that it does kind of make sense to keep hold of him because of the good vibes kind of thing that he does, but. I agree with the lads. What the lads say, you, you, you can't argue. Do you know what I mean? Even in his first game against Norwich City, he concedes, and we were three nil or four nil up in that in the title winning season. And then he has, you know, he has his moments in the Super League Super Cup final against Chelsea. Um, he has had a few moments. He's had a lot more rocky moments than that that come to mind. But it's 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 what Klopp wants, and if Klopp wants him and keeps him. I'm quite happy with that, and I'm with James. Contract renewal, please, Defo. <laughs> so the first <laughs> dream of the window for James um, comes true, and this was tweeted right right about when that news came out. So people were very, you know, like, "What are you talking about, James?" But if you know him, he knows that he was not too serious about that. This is a much more in-depth dream window from our friends at AVGYAAN. So the three transfers he wants to see for sure: Alexis McAllister, Dominic Kostobislai. And Manu Kone, we totaled in for about 146 million pounds. We we were debating how we wanted to format this, like our request, because you can value these players slightly differently. Everyone could value them ever differently than others, and then a lot of outs here. So uh, Kelleher for about 20 million, Tyler Morton for about six million, Nat Phillips for about six. The big one that we'll definitely discuss on is Andrew Robertson selling him for 37 million. Um, that's a fascinating one. Before we jump into anything else, I want to dig into this point because this is something that I actually have pondered is Robertson and his long-term future. Um, Kev, I'll toss it to you first. Robertson, sh- could you see a scenario where he sold or are you still committed on him for at least another season? At least another season. I'll have a heart attack if we're left with Timicus playing at left back for the yeah. full season. Um, who's... Who's got the legs of Maguire, and he's got the he's got the actual football brain of a Moreno. You <laughs> nothing whatsoever that provides me with any kind of confidence that selling Andy Robertson is is actually is doable. I'd I'd be all over it if we didn't have a priority this season, and our priority is sorting the midfield. I'd sooner sort that out, get that out of the way first, and then see where we lie. He is getting a little bit. He is getting on. He hasn't had his best of seasons, but I would continue with Andy Robertson. I, uh, at the minute, there's no one at the club I'd, I'd replace him with. And if 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 you're getting 37, I, I think you could, you could make that to 45, 50. Then I'd I'd, I'd I'd then be looking at selling, and I'll be bringing someone else in to to replace. But I wouldn't be selling them and then relying on some because the price? for the, the whole for 100. percent Is it a price for you? It is. I I, 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 think that's a bit too low for what Andy mm-hmm. Robertson is and what he can do. I, he, he hasn't had his best, best of seasons, but the season before he had, the, he was, he's up there with assists with Trent. I'm, I'm, I'm between the pair of them. He shows that, like what a new left back, what a modern left back can can do in, in a league when played in the right way. He's, he's phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. He's getting old, and we move, and we at some point we do need to move on. And it goes against everything I always say, which is we need to be ruthless and we need to, you know, stop keeping all the players. But that's one position that I do not want to be looking at unless there's a doable deal to bring someone else in straight away. I'm not 
I, I, I don't want to be waiting to the end of the window to be waiting on it to bring someone in. If we're selling them, then I want to back up boards in straight away immediately with that money, and it's out of the way then, and we carry on with our priorities as we as moving forward. But it it, it, it is a it is a it is a tough one. Don't get me wrong, and I, it's it, it's hard to say what is right or wrong with that because I know some people would go, yeah, I'd sell them in a half beat. Get him out there. Get him out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kev, you know why? You know why? Yeah, because. The way Liverpool are trying to play now, we're, we're playing the lopsided way. So Trent's doing a coming in, then the left back is not doing adventurous. So if you look at the other pe- other teams that do the lopsided, so City, they've got the lopsided as well, then Arsenal got the Ben White as well. We can't have that with Rubble. So I can see how the way Liverpool are trying to, trying to transition into Trent coming in, we need a left back that can defend. And Robo is an adventurous left back. So I can see how we're trying to mold into that that new style of play we're trying to go. With. So if I see if I do see Liverpool selling for 37 million or 40 million, we do need a plan. Like we need a plan after. So who are we gonna buy for that role? That's important. That's what let's I'm let's look at the bottom of his dream window. He's looking at what he would sign with the sales that they would make, and those all three of those guys you would imagine would be someone that could play in that left back, left center back role. I love how you're using the word lopsided. It's like inverted, lopsided. I haven't heard mm-hmm. someone use it like that. Um, Josco Guardiola is the big signing, eighty million pounds. He was rumored to join Chelsea last summer. He would be a heavily, I mean, he'd be a Virgil Van Dyke esque price wise signing. Um, that's Gonzalo Inacio and then Levi Colwell and then Maxwell LaCroix, I believe, are the other options in that group. All three could play in that left back, left center back spot. And I agree, FJ. I think that Robertson is limited in playing that role in this new system. Mm-hmm. But the question is, can you bring in one of those guys at that kind of price point? Anthony, I'll let you jump in on, on this window. Um, Robertson, we, we'll kind of stay on that same train of thought. Moving him out to bring in a, almost another center back, where do you kind of fall on that? Spectrum said it last stream. I, I just think he's past it now. Um, I know <laughs> Kev, you said he was good a couple of years ago. He, I, I'll stand by the fact I think he cost us a Champions League final just because Ooh. that one stupid runaway <laughs> tried to press Modric. How, what, wow, he yeah. tried pressing Modric from his, from the hot to the halfway line. And yeah, so yeah, much I know, space I know, I know. But, um, I yeah, I, I think Colwell is like fairly <laughs> into the and I might be wrong there, so he is good, but. The only one is Guardiola there, but I'd probably, yeah, I, I'm just not sure. I don't think there's many, I don't like, like Kevin was saying, I don't think Robertson's someone you need to replace at the moment. The midfield's clearly the biggest issue, but come next season, I think he, he's definitely going to be past it. Um, and I think he, he's not going to really improve us. So we, we need someone to replace him. With. He's and, the best left back in the league. Is he the best what? Is he the best left back in the league? Wait, uh, wait, who's better than him? Guy, who's better than Luke Shaw. Oh, Luke Shaw. I don't. I don't disagree. He had a good season. He had a good season. Better this season, but Luke Shaw's a centre back. Luke Shaw's a centre back. <laughs> <laughs> He's a centre back. Actually, okay, sure. yeah, but that, that's just because the left back market is so dry right now. I'm telling you, there's probably about two or three good left backs in the world. Honestly, like I think this is actually an interesting point that. Look at what Pep and Arteta are both doing. They're kind of trailblazing, just getting rid of fullbacks in the sense of you don't want guys in wide defensive positions who can't win duels or defend and bomb forward. So teams have been exposing that. So they're kind of responding with fullbacks who are just center backs who kind of been shifted out there. Look at what Ake has been doing. Mm -hmm. Walker's kind of maintained his spot there. But like Jao Cancelo has been moved on by City, even though he's a brilliantly talented fullback either side. So I think I, I agree. I think that the general thought for me is ideally you bring in a uh, Gonzalo Inacio because he would be a nice option to come in as a backup center back, learn the role at the left back spot. Robertson like would kind of struggle there next season. It wouldn't be a perfect solution, but I think if we're, we're pulling the trigger on an ideal option like Cole will or, or Guardiol, that's going to cost a lot of money and really make things tough. Let's look at the, the signings they did make up top McAllister, Shobosly and Kone. Are there any thoughts either way on any of those guys? McAllister is in almost everybody's team. I'll give you a preview for the next few that we're going to look at. Where where do we kind of fall on the signings there? I'll, I'll toss it to you. Uh, FJ, I'll go to, that, to you first on that one. Any thoughts on the incomings they've got on the stream window? Or are you a fan, not a fan? I'm a fan of all these signings. They're all nice. 
But the thing about it, they look nice, but are they gonna fit nice? But Callis has had a taste of the Premier League, so he knows how it's gonna feel. How it, Brighton they do the pressing, they do the passing, they do the, oh, Brighton are playing beautiful, so he understands what we need. The rest, do they understand? Are they gonna wrap? At the end of the day, we need now. Like we need something now, so we don't have time for them to gel or get used to the Premier League or get used to the intensity. Like we don't have time for that. So I do like them; they're great players. But McAllister, he's probably the number one guy that I would like to come from out them three. Yeah, hundred percent. Anthony, you know we were talking in the WhatsApp. I didn't realize you were kind of not a Darwin Nunez hater. I don't want to claim that, <laughs> that but you're you're not. Like I'm, I'm big on Nunez. Like I think that he's got a lot of potential. But what he did prove this past year is that Klopp can't take anybody, you know, he can't take me in and then turn me into a competent football. He can't do that with just about anybody. And so building off FJ's point on, especially Shobosly and Kone, both are riskier investments. How will they fit into the team in that midfield spot? They haven't played in the Premier League. I hate the term Premier League proven, but McAllister has won a World Cup. It's kind of hard to <laughs> do things beyond that. For you, how ambitious, like how risky do you want to see the signs this summer may, uh, to be made in terms of trading off the value of a non Premier League proven guy versus you know trying to take a bit more of a risk? Um, I think the McAllister one, everyone's spotting about that, but Colin, I think, would be a decent backup option. He, he definitely wouldn't start for us, I think. You've got Fabinho still there and uh, he could play that defensive role, but I've never actually seen that. I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. So, but so bold guy, 58 million. I, I've never heard of him. So, uh, Dominic Schoberschlei. Oh, I, I, his name is just fun to pronounce. <laughs> Schoberschlei. <laughs> I've never heard of him. So, can't really have an opinion on that. But I think you have to drop branch out into into the foreign market just because the Premier League plays. They're just going to be way too expensive nowadays as well. Um, there's reports, obviously, more recently we're after two rounds. So, hopefully, that one's true. But. Uh, the, the only other Premier League player I see us linked with is like Mason Mount, but keep him away, man. Keep yeah, him away. I know you like him, Jack, but he likes him for 70 mil, man. I like the idea of him. I like the idea of Mason Mount. But like we see the rumors, the reports today, I think it might have been even Ornstein that maybe for, I think it was Fabrizio that said uh, Chelsea want at minimum 70 million pounds for Mount. 70? Yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here. No one. If anybody spends seventy million pounds on Mason Mount, they need to they need to lose their job. That guy only plays good on the Lampard. Other than that, but Mount, you see Mount, I like him. He's a guy. He's a nice player. I see what he can offer, but he's not us for now. He's coming. No. He would be an interesting choice for the right center mid. But let's jump into the next one. Um, this is just incoming players: McAllister, Kefram, Thuram, Ryan Gravenberch, and then an either Jurian Timber or Jules Kunde, and then Gonzalo Inacio. A lot of similarities. You'll see. There are, I think, one or two guys that will be in most people's or consistently in some of them. Let's dive into Turam. There was the reports just about two hours ago that from uh, L'Equipe in France that Liverpool are interested in trying to bring him in. It would cost about 60 million euros is the current report. Kind of more of a box-to-box -box guy in the midfield. He's 22 years old, the son of Lillian Turam and the brother of Marcus Turam. So a lot of, lot of good footballers in that family. Um, Liverpool, we'll link to them as well. FJ for you, Turam, diving into him in specific. Oh my days, bring him, please. What? On the ball, comfortable on the ball, box to box, strong, tackling. Oh my days. You see him? We need him. Him, we need. He's my number one. He's my number really? one. What? Beautiful player. 22 years old. He's ready for this. He's ready. What are we going to get him? That's the question. I can't get excited like this no more. There's no point getting excited. We need him comfortable. Every, he's like Pogba, but better version of Pogba. Better ver maybe not a better version, but he's a energetic box-to-box -box player and Pogba's lazy. He, we need him. Bring him on, please. We need him. We need him. We need him. We need him. He was in the Liga and team of the season. We got his first friend, uh, friends call up pretty recently. He's a guy who's kind of on the rise. 60 million seems like a pretty reasonable fee for him. Again, he's 22. A lot of room for improvement and growth, and he will just win challenges. You got Rigo in the comments there. He, a big, big fan of Turam himself. I wanted to bring Rigo on to get him his thoughts on it, but at least we got we got FJ here, so it's like we got we got somebody who's a big Turam supporter in the group. Um, any other uh, Kev? Any dive into any player you want on here? If you're a fan, not a fan, um, talk about Turam obviously, but interested in your thoughts on this dream. I. I, I agree with FJ, I agree with Rigo. You know, 
Last season, he's played 35 games for Nice, two goals, four assists. He's progressive with the pass and progressive. He comes out of middle of that park. He's got an engine on him. I hope he has the defensive DNA that his dad has, because that will be yeah. unreal in that middle of that park. And to have a beast, that is good looking as well. We're <laughs> back, man. We're back. He is beautiful. And his best mate is Ibu. It says there it all go. for me. There we Do you go. know what I mean? The, the only, the only, the only stumbling block with the um, nieces is that Jim Radcliffe is the owner of um, Nice, so he, he's not going to be playing nice with us. Sorry for the pun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, uh, apart from him, I'm, I, I, I quite like the Ajax lad um, who's now at Bayern Munich, Gravenberg. I, I think he's got room for for improvements. Timber. Is the versatile? He's the versatile player that that Klopp would love. Mm-hmm. He can play right back, play centre mid. He can play centre back as well. Centre mid. He's played that a few times, not much in his career, but he can play there. And Accio, another one of Sporting who I watched the other week against Benfica, looked very good. But can play on the left hand side. So you know that debate we said about Robbo before. He can play three, the three at the back there. And then with Toram, who can just, with his engine, can cover it over there as well. There's a lot I like on, on, on that one. There's there's a hell of a lot I like. And some good-looking lads as well. <laughs> You're going for the for the aura <laughs> factor. You're looking for that. Oh, yeah. No, to, to, to be honest with you, it, it showed against Aston Villa. And I don't know whether everyone agreed. But we, we missed that physicality in the middle of that park in the last game of the season. And it truly understood. That's where we're, what we're missing. And that should be our priority this season. Our first one in should be a defensive midfielder. An absolute beast, a Mascherano version 2.0. That's the kind of pace we need to bring in first. And then, you know, the likes of a McAllister who can who, who, who can play in the number eight and the, and the number 10 role or whatever he wants to play. Bring him in quality and then bring in another engine in the middle of the park as well, Casado possibly. And then and then you bring in Timber or an HO or both. Perfect window, isn't it? So... You know. <laughs> Big fans of this one. Anthony, any thoughts on this window here from, I didn't even say his handle, LFC underscore J underscore G-R-I-X-T-I. What are your, that was a phenomenal handle right there. What are your thoughts on this window? You know what, LFC underscore J underscore great <laughs> T-I. Perfect, perfect. Maybe not, um, no, you can't really find any faults. <laughs> I, I genuinely think that's a great window for us. And that that's like what we'd need to be spending to be like back up there competing for that Premier League, man. And, like everyone said back to um, McAllister as well, mate. That NFT midfield, yeah, we need to bring bring that back in a, in another form. And uh, I think next season we'll, we'll see it. I, I hate watching City, yeah, because they control the, the their midfield is so good, yeah, hundred hundred miles clear of everyone else. And when I watch Liverpool now, I'm seeing Jones, Henderson, Fabinho try to keep a ball. It's poor. We've had to watch Milner, Henderson, Elliot try and keep try and pass the ball around for the past couple of years. So. Jurgen Klopp needs to do something this, this summer and bring in any of those options. McAllister Turam, he can win the ball back as well. My my dream was true, man. It's not going to happen, so I'll take Turam instead. I think my my only – it's tough. The number six defensive midfield market is not very strong. There's not a ton of options out there. That's kind of what I'm looking for is just some steel in the midfield because the system kind of lost its potency when the midfield lost its physicality. And so – any legs in the midfield will just kind of transform things in a positive way. But my friend here, we, we are very big fans of this window. Um, this one's interesting for a number of ways. So it's again, dreams. Dreams are allowed to be had on the LLC transfer room. Uh, Hypatia Lantern. Uh, did I butcher that? I hope I didn't butcher that, <laughs> that pronunciation there. Um, bringing in Bellingham, McAllister, and Mount in the midfield. And that's an interesting midfield trio. Compared to the steel of last one, this is a lot more silky, a lot more skill in this midfield. And then bringing in Jurian Timber and Jules Kunde in the back line while moving on the center back duo of Joel Matip and Joe Gomez. Mm-hmm. Um, an interesting one there. We've kind of already said, is there is there anybody who's going to vouch for Mason Mount or do I have to be the Mason Mount devil's advocate? He, he can be the Mason okay. Mount. Uh, he'd be an interesting option in the right center mid spot. You're weakening a rival. You're... you're Got a guy who's shown a capability to score some goals, create some assists. Last season, he had 20 
goals and assists in the Prem, 10 plus in both sides of it. He was capable as he was more of a forward, though. That's the big reservation. He didn't play as in, really as an eight when he was getting those goals and assists. But when he's playing as that right side at eight, he's almost a number 10. He's almost in as a part of that front unit because of the way our system is going to be played very much on the front foot. He'd be a good option. The price point, though, I think if, again, we mentioned it a bit, a bit ago, according to Fabrizio Romano, they want 70 million pounds at a minimum. That feels like a non-starter. Um, Jude Bellingham appears bound for Madrid, but until, you know, he's officially signed, we can still dream that maybe he might sign. Is there any remaining hope for anybody that maybe he has a bit of a change of heart and he decides Liverpool's for me? Or are we kind of just committed to, to Bellingham no longer being a guy? Uh, I'm sure he, he's, uh, he's, th- he's double thinking now. Oh, do I want to play for the 14-time Champions League winners? Or do I want to be playing in Europe League next season? Like, <laughs> no chance, no chance. If Real Madrid come calling, no one no said nothing, you know. Yeah. But I forgot about Bellingham anyway, but Jude can go if he wants, man. I'm trying, man. <laughs> for a whole year. I've been calling this Jude guy for a whole year. I'm tired of it now. He can go if he wants now, man. But the only thing about it, we can't get McAllister amount. We can't get two of the same players. That's the thing I'm trying to say, like, I'm thinking. We can't. But that's nice. I like that. But yeah, we can't get the two of the same players. Get away from here, Jude, man. I've been crying for this guy for so long now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but that is my issue with this with this signing. Is I like the defensive signings, Timber and Kunde. I'm cool for. I think reports have been increasing about Kunde leaving um, Sevilla. But the issue with that midfield three, you're spending upwards of 200 million pretty much on those three guys. And can they even play together in one midfield? I don't think they can. I, I think you you would be playing someone as a defensive mid who is in a defensive mid, or you're playing a diamond in the midfield, or you're sticking mount at left wing. So okay, yeah. that one's got its flaws to it. Um, Bellingham, and also there's someone saying the, the the knee injury reportedly, he might get surgery. Jude Bellingham might be getting surgery in his knee and miss some of England's Euro qualifiers. So people are being a, like, they're really coping hard with the loss of Bellingham by like saying, oh, didn't want him anyways. Like the knee <laughs> injury, he, he, he's, he's, do- he's, he's going to be done. You talking about me? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you, you're, you're at least not like discrediting his talent or like his future. But people are like the, the knee injuries and everything. He'll be okay. I think but he'll Jack, be okay. Jack, do you, do you think though? Because Bellingham's now out of the out of the way, mm-hmm. and I've said this all along that even this this transfer window's got to be on point. And it's what FJ was saying before, which is quite right. We we can't allow. We need people to come in like Diaz did. And come in and make an instant reaction or the instant response. The problem I've got with Bellingham is is that the whoever comes in, we as a fan, as a fan base, not all of us are going to be happy, are we? Because it will always be, well, if we played an little bit extra, we could have got you. If we did have done this, da 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 da. So no one's going to be happy with who we actually bring in, no matter who it is. And that's the problem we've got is that. There's not. I, I think we're coming to terms with it because there's alternatives out there. If you look for them, Ugarte is another one at Sporting Lisbon who I really like as well. But I, it, it's it, it's it just feels as though that it's all based upon if only we got you Bellingham, and one person doesn't change or alter anything. We need three or four players, and I think that there's got to come a bit of a. There's got to come a bit, not a bit of a compromise, but a bit of a common sense to say, well, we need more players, and we spend most of our fund, our transfer fund on one player. That's not necessarily going to happen. What should have happened is, is that all these players that we're talking about should have been brought in the last two, three windows beforehand when Ronaldo left, and then we this see this this window would have been all about Bellingham. Yeah. I don't know if anyone agrees with that, 100%. but that, that's the way it should have been. Hundred percent. I mean, you you we've already seen it with McAllister. You know, the reports were that it was going to be pushing seventy million for him, and then there are the reports that it was a hundred million euros fixed upfront fee for Madrid to sign Jude Bellingham. People are saying that's a just a bit of a push upwards. You know, from McAllister saying, why don't you just spend a little bit more money? You've, you've already seen it with McAllister, the first signing potentially of the summer. You know, knock on wood. Obviously, nothing's signed and sealed just yet. But no, obviously, it's going to be fascinating with with not signing Bellingham. 
this team needed to make signings for several windows. And now we've made the problem humongous for ourselves. And hopefully the club recognizes that they made a mistake and they need to spend the money to rectify it. Because if they try and keep a similar pattern, it's really not going to look in a very good direction. But let's dig into the selling side of these things because there will be more on these players in a moment, I'm sure. But Matt's been Gomez. Let's say, take a poll of us. And if and you're in the chat as well, feel free to jump in on Matt's and Gomez. Do you want to see them stay or do you want to see them go? And are, if there are any factors that will push you either way. Uh, FJ, I'll go to you first. Matt's and Gomez, do you try to keep those two? Move them on. Gomez, I like Gomez. I like Gomez a lot. Gomez a lot. But ever since that injury, they have been the same. But I like him a lot. But if we do get another centre back like Timba or Kunde, they are very like they're like like versatile kind of players. They will be good for our team. So if we do get another defender, yeah, we we'll sell them. But we do need backup mm-hmm. just in case Van Dijk goes. You know, yeah. So we the hundred percent need backup. So I I do agree. We can sell them to you. But the last person there, we need to speak about it. Let's say that last person there. We need to speak about him after. We can't let him go. We can't let him go. But yeah, let's, let's talk about the centre-backs first. It's a great point you mentioned. I was almost going to gloss by him. Uh, Anthony, I'll toss it to you. Centre-backs, those two guys, stay or do they go? Uh, I'm not sure if he's in the chat. Baljak, we, we called you a clown, mate, for, for saying how rubbish Gomez is. But oh. it's, it's, I think I think it's, it's, time, it's time to accept. Yeah, he needs to move on just because... Just the injuries, like like uh, F was saying, but uh, with Matip, I still feel like he he's good. I, I don't I don't really get the the height he's been getting this season. Obviously, he's not performed at that level, but he's barely played. Like he's very because Konate's really taken that spot, and it, it's hard for Matip to to play at top level consistently when he's not getting consistent minutes. So I think keep him because you're barely going to get any money from him anyway. Um, Van Dijk, Konate, or Van Dijk, Matip. Gotcha. Van Dijk can hard say, but I, I don't think you're losing too much quality when, when you put Matip in there either, to be honest. So, keep Matip, but yeah, Gomez, Gomez is past it now. I think bring in Kunde or, or Timber. Do you agree that Matip over um, Konate or Konate over Matip? I think Konate is phew, unbelievable. I, I think he's the long-term successor to Van Dijk. Um, we've already got him. Are you, I, you think? I think we're looking at who's going to partner Kanate in the future, not who's going to replace Van Dyke in the future. That's my current thought on it, because um, he's just a physical profile, unlike really many any, any other center backs in the world, and he's just an unbelievable talent. Um, but I, I think that if Matt tips your fourth choice center back, third or fourth choice center back, you're in a great spot because he is a he seems like a great guy for the culture. Van Dyke loves him; he's always talking about how much he loves Joel Matt Tip. Um, and it's just a great option as a rotation guy because with his injuries, you can't trust him for a full season, obviously. But if he's a guy who comes in and out, I think you're you're golden. So I wouldn't be put if someone throws like 20, 30 million pounds in front of you for Matt Tip, maybe you say, All right, this is the last big payday we'd get for him. Maybe you move him on, but I don't think you're ushering him out the door. Gomez, though, I think you do sound out some offers. Um, let's dig into Carvalho. I don't want to leave this one for later. Let's let's dig into it. Um, so obviously there was the reports that came out yesterday and maybe even the day before that Klopp says he doesn't have a future next season. So even looking for long term. Like just moving him on permanently. There are reports that a Champions League club has lodged a bid for him already last month. He had his Instagram post yesterday, and Anthony Alanga replied and said, new home, dot, dot, dot. And then uh, he replied and said, soon, which raised a lot of question marks around things. Um, FG, I'll go to you first. How is the management of Carvalho been, and what do you hope is the long-term future for him? I feel he was, oh, my. Do you know what it is, though? He come to a team and the way Fabio plays is not the same. Like, oh, oh, oh. you see, Fabio, he is he's better. I could so, let me ever say it, but Fabio is an amazing talent at Fulham. If you knew what he was doing at Fulham, I was oh, him and Harvey Elliott, though, I love both of them, love both of them. He's come from Fulham, but the way Klopp and the system is not suiting him, everything he's good at, he can't do. Oh, no, but don't let him go. In five years, he's going to come back and back. Oh, my days. Remember I say this now. Don't let him go. He's an amazing talent. But our system don't fit him. And I understand that. What are your thoughts on a loan? A loan for Carvalho for this coming season? Not permanent, just a loan for one year. You're not breaking up with your girlfriend. It's just a break for a little bit. Our system still don't fit him. (laughs) Uh, Literally, our system still don't fit him. But I want him in our team. Mm -hmm. But we can't change him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to do. It's really tough because you make a great point. It's just... Maybe it just doesn't work out. Maybe it was just a match that never would have 
worked out in the end. Kev, for you, on Carvalho, where do you kind of fall on him? It's it's sad in a way, but the way we've we've been after him up in like January, that that falls through on the last hour of, of deadline day. And then we try and get something in place to bring him in. I think what hasn't helped and has hindered him is that as well as he comes in, we just fall off a cliff for, for the whole of the season. Yeah. That doesn't help. As well as that, you, you look at what's happened at Portugal as well, and you can't you can't get away from the fact that Sutton's gone on after that Newcastle game, and from when he left the Portugal Portuguese squad and went, I don't want no more of this. That Sutton has happened, and has kind of triggered them not worse, not seeing much of him, and he's getting little glimpses. I agree with everything what FJ says. At Fulham, he was an absolute dream for them, and that player really excited me. I actually thought we were bringing him in, but I have to agree, he doesn't suit our style of play and how we play uh, at the minute. Now, whether we're going through a full formation change and it's going to take a year for us to try and bed that in and then we bring him back, I think that could be done. One thing about a loan deal which I think could work well for us is that although we haven't got many assets to sell, necessarily with the likes of letting Cater go run down his contract Chamberlain going as well I know they didn't have they were poor but you're letting a 50 million pound asset go for nothing you've got someone you know we could have at least got 20 million from the German market with Carvalho is you entice someone from say I don't know say I don't know maybe um just try and think. Villa. Sport and well, Villa and try and get Jacob Ramsey in as a like for like. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? You the, 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 the what I mean is you, you use him as part of well, you can have him on loan for this season and we'll take your player. It it seems a little bit nicer to do it that way. He needs game time. Otherwise, his value is gonna have drop. We've got four years left. It doesn't do anyone any harm in letting him go off on loan. Get him to settle down, see if he can get himself back to the way he was before, and and then he comes back, a different player, teams rejuvenated, refreshed, and he comes in and he can show us what he'd done at full. That that's my hope. I, I want to take a brief pause on Carvalho Carter coming in the comments. So Carter, um about two years ago now, kind of just was like, we need to get rid of Henderson, bring in Loftus Cheek. I call them clown. Like he, he replied that one streams. I call him a clown. Yeah. So this this was I think when Henderson was having the question marks on would he sign a new contract. So this was about just under two years ago now. Um, and so I said no. Like you're talking about a a, a legend of the club. Sign, give him a new contract. FSG sucks. They need to give him a new contract. And one year later, he came back and he was like, "What are your thoughts on Henderson now?" And I was like, "He's crap. I'm sorry. I I got it all wrong." Um, Loft to streak though, still like all right. Like he he needs to kind of go somewhere else. Milan reportedly are in the comments there as well. For for Carvalho, like I want to bring up this comment, even though it's a bit yelly. Um, from Gamer Two Thousand says Fabio is the next Brewster Solanke young player, blowing <laughs> them out, then sell them for twenty. <laughs> FJ, who said that? What's his name? Who said that? What's his name? Gamer Two Thousand. <laughs> Let me see. What's his name? Wow. Oh, my days. What a comment. And you know what's funny? I will say I, was, I like Brewster as well, you know. I like Brewster before he left, you know. But Fabio is a better talent than both of them. Fabio is a different talent. A different That's talent. what I was going to ask. Is, is, is Fabio similar, close? Could it be a similar no situation? Way, no way. No way. They can't talk to Fabio. Fabio is a different talent. But Kev said it. I even forgot this point. Kev said he's coming at a time when Liverpool are like... We're not even playing properly. Like we're not even, and he's come in and he's trying. Yeah, it's too much, man. It's just it was just too much, and he he didn't get to show nothing. You know, I went to Fulham and interviewed the Fulham fans, and they're saying to me, "You guys are just stealing our players." I'm like, "Who? Who are you stealing?" So you're stealing Harvey Elliott and Fabio. I figure, oh my, they say you're stealing our youngsters, and it's true. We stole both of them, and one's not working. Oh yeah, keep him. He's a big talent. I wonder if Fabio regrets coming to Liverpool. You know, he could have played in a Premier League side that first year. Um, kind of Andreas Pereira kind of played his role a little bit. Um, if he's thinking maybe, what, what if I stayed? You know, for for another year, Premier League football. I got I got them promoted, and then I stay. Maybe I, I kick it on a little bit more playing time 
for a full season rather than kind of six months of being in and out and then just nothing. But I think alone couldn't kill, couldn't be the worst thing. I would hate for us to move him on for like 20 million though, because I think he's got a lot of talent. Let's dive into the next one. So wait, what are our final thoughts? I mean, we're kind of just against this one, not, not, not fans uh, of this window. I I think that Lone would be good to be fair, but okay. you know what? Paul, Paul Joy said it was Leipzig who bidded for him. I'm not sure if you guys have seen it. And he said uh, Klopp still sees him as a future starter for Liverpool. So I think that's good news. Paul Joyce said it about Carvalho. Oh, we trust Joyce in this. In this <laughs> Should we, we trust, trust Joyce? <laughs> All right, let's take this one from IFC Gakpo. And th- this is this is one of the people who I think was most hurt by the change of the eyes to being like proper eyes rather than just like a straight up line. Cause I was like IFC Gakpo. Anyways, uh, it says the dream is Guardiola, Rice, Caicedo, McAllister. That is a dream. That That's would be. Dream. That's an expensive dream. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about what? 80 million for Guardiola. Like 93, I think was what they wanted for Rice. Caicedo, yeah. they turned down like 80 in the, in the winter and then signed up to a new deal. So he's, I mean, like a hundred. McAllister's like 60. Talking about near 300 for four <laughs> players. Um, we've talked about McAllister and Gavardio a little bit. I think Gavardio would be a nice guy as the left center back, left back kind of guy. Expensive, though. Could that happen? McAllister feels like it's close to happening. Feels like it could be the first signing in the summer. Rice, Caicedo. That's rumored to be Arsenal's dream midfield pairing signing this, this summer, which would turn them into an unbelievable juggernaut if they signed those two guys. Anthony, for you on Rice, Caicedo, where you fall in terms of thinking they're good value for money. Pe- people don't even, some people don't even rate Rice. You know, I'm a huge Declan Rice fan, but where do you kind of fall on Rice and Caicedo? Uh, just to your point before, I don't, I don't think Arsenal will ever become a juggernaut. I thought, I thought, I think they had their season, which is this year, and they're going to flop next season. They won't make top four, but back to Rice and Caicedo. Caicedo, I'd love him at Liverpool. Rice, I'd take him as well, but I just think he'll be too expensive. I know Caicedo will be expensive as well, but. Mate, those two have killed it at Brighton. Caicedo and McAllister in this Liverpool team, you got such good defenders. Um, great forwards as well. I think they'll fit in perfectly, and I'll take Guardiola as well. Kev, for you, Rice, Caicedo. I, I'll be honest, I wasn't a big Rice fan. Um, never have been. Um, until this season when he played against us at, West, um, at home, and I absolutely fell in love with what he was doing. He does things that he's a bit like a young Henderson, but better. He's he's got that kind of he does all the dirty work, but you don't necessarily make he doesn't really do anything. He, 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 he's not one of those glistening players that you look at in the middle of the park and go, I'm gonna watch you all game. But by God, he's 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 a quality player. He, he, you know, he, he does all the dirty work and more for West Ham. And he's taken a, a young a, a West Ham side, you know, that have been Faltering around relegation to a Europa Conference final. Do you know what I mean with this season? So he's he's a great talent. Garvel, you know, I I hadn't seen much of him, but you know, you bring him in from I saw him in the World Cup, and my God, what a monster he is! What a monster he is! Yeah. Can you imagine him and Kanata at the back of the, in the in our as two of our centre backs? You're not getting past them. It's like it's like a brick wall. It'd be like. It'd be like a young Van Dijk and a coup de barley. Do you know what I mean? It's just unreal. You're not getting past them at all. That's that. that that's the hope. Casado and McAllister, you know, what can be said? Both have absolutely nailed it this season. Very young, very talented. And I've got and could reach the top and be at the pinnacle. And Liverpool is probably the best place for them. The way we play is is a mirror image of what Brighton do. And you're coming into a Liverpool side, you don't have to do much. All we'll be doing is just do what you did to Brighton and you'll, you'll fit in like a, an absolute hand. It'll be like a glove on a hand, honestly. It'll be like Michael Jackson with his with his hand, uh, with his glove. It's a <laughs> yee <yee-hee> for me. <laughs> I'm moonwalking all the way. <laughs> FJ for you, Caicedo, Rice. Any thoughts on that, those two guys? Also, we'll get Caicedo, Rice, we are in trouble. I think if, we are. Yeah, in Caicedo and Rice, we are in trouble. But I don't know where they're going to play Declan Rice. I feel like they're going to put Declan like where Jacob plays. But Caicedo, he is crazy. Wow. He's amazing. 
If Arsenal get them two, we are finished. We are finished. But yeah, this is the best. This is the best transfer so far. Very expensive. Very expensive. But this is the best so far. I agree. I think this is in terms of dream. You think about transform this team into a instant like back almost okay. favorites for the prem. I think it's hard. It's hard to go past this window because it's it's realistic too. Like not realistic yeah. in the sense of like that it's just going to happen. But it you could see this happen if they really splurged the cash. Kev, go ahead. Sorry. We sign them, we win the quad. I think it's up there. <laughs> the depth would be a little bit of a concern because you've already lost four. You're bringing in four. Like, are you moving nobody else on? Um, but this, it'd be a good balance. So, my friend number 18, you've got a good window right there. We'll go on to the next one. Um, McAllister, Caicedo, or Manuel Ugarte. We haven't really talked about a ton um, from Sporting Lisbon. And then Nicolo Barea from Inter. And then Alex Scott, who plays for Bristol, I believe. And then they are moving Henderson on and loaning Harvey Elliott out. Um, so let's let's dig into this one. Uh, before we look at the incoming, let's look at the outgoings. Jordan Henderson. Captain Fantastic. No way. Talk, talk about a guy who does not divide opinion. Everyone agrees they have the exact same thoughts and they have the exact same level-headed reactions when asked about Jordan Henderson. So obviously there, there's a very contentious discussion on should he stay, should he go, should he have a big role. Um, it's hard for me to see him move on, to be honest. Like, he's your captain. Kev, is there any world where you can see this as a dream window? Sure, this could be your dream that Henderson goes. Do you see any world where Henderson has moved on this summer? I don't. I see him moving into the James Milner role, coming on for ten minutes, yeah. trying to and doing and showing his leadership on, on in certain games where we need it, um, playing more so in the FA Cup games, the Europa League games. If we get the pay, if we get our, our midfield sorted, he, that that's the role I see for Henderson. He comes in, fits and starts. Plays, brings the youngsters on a bit like what Milner's done in the FA Cup games and the League Cup games. That's where I see Henderson. Um, unfortunately, um, he's been a great servant for this club. I, I understand that people really don't want to like him and, and feel that two years ago we should have got rid of him. But you can't say that that man hasn't given his heart and his soul for this club. And what he does on and off the pitch is an, he's an absolute ambassador um, for, for, for the role he plays at our club. And he's been integral to part of Klopp's plans as has Milner. So to lose that kind of leadership and to move and to move both him and Milner on in the same window ain't going to happen, I don't think, for me personally. I, I, my issue with, with Henderson is not him as a player individually. Like I just think he's we're asking too much of him. We're asking him to play a role in the build up, play as almost a right winger, overlapping Salah at times. And even in his heyday, he wasn't brilliant at that. Like he was okay at it, but we're asking him kind of almost in the twilight of his career to play a role he's not very good at. And it's just bringing on abuse because he's he's. I, I have no question of his desire, tenacity, and his love of this club. But you're asking him to do stuff that he can't do, which I think is unfair on him. Maybe, you know, you could say maybe you need a better player in there. But I think that if you just – if you bring in that midfield right there, McAllister, Caicedo, Barella, you don't need him to play as an advanced eight anymore. He can play as a really late match yeah. sub substitute or as like the six in games where you really control against other teams. And when, when we're heavily in possession – you know, not really a team that's going to attack too much. He'd be okay as if it being your backup. Um, Anthony, I'll, I'll let you dive in on the the Henderson discussion, kind of this this discussion here. You're shaking your head. Where are you taking this? Because it, I've, I've had enough of his backup. It Mil the play the James Milner role. Milner wasn't even good at the James Milner role. But you know what? I, I, if Henderson left, I genuinely would have gave Milner a new contract because I agree with the leadership aspect. But Henderson just offers nothing and. I know I say it every single time, but he just doesn't. He has no footballing ability, no footballing IQ. He's rubbish. He can't kick a ball properly. It's, it's just as simple as that. And his legs have gone. And um, he, he's been here, what, 13 years now. Like, generally, put into context, he's been here 13 years and be, had about three three good seasons. He, he's not that good. And he's, he's far past it. Far, far past it. His best trait were, was his leadership, which I think obviously matters to an extent. But Look at us, we're in Europa League now. So, so far where that leadership has brought us, we need to replace him. And I agree, he, he should go. He's never going to go, though, let's be honest. 
he'll probably run down his contract. And even then, I think Klopp, uh, Klopp will still give him a new contract anyway. But we're, we're, at the moment, we're paying 140k a week to a cheerleader. <laughs> I want to jump in. Louis, great to see you in the comments here. Hope you're doing very well. Big contributor to the page in the past. Big reason for the success we've had. Hope that you're doing very well in your endeavors. Um, hit me up if you need anything. Obviously, um, yeah. What do you what do you think about um, Henderson? Then, eh? So I I'm not like I'm kind of in between <laughs> Kevin and Anthony. I'm not like he's completely done. But look, I I think if his minutes would be much better served in a lot of other spots. Like it, it's really hard to see you know <laughs> someone being worse than him as a performer. Great leader, <laughs> great guy. And I'm not saying he's like just a cheerleader. Like that's a little, that's a little harsh. I can definitely see the argument from Anthony. Um, but I, I think um, he he lacks the legs, which is what he had. And in his, in his prime was when he was really able to cover the ground, press. And he was a pressing monster. Anthony, I know you're going to say, what's his prime? I know that you're about to say something like that. But no, no, he, he, to be fair, he played well during that, that Premier League winning season. He played really well because his main role was just to, to run ping balls about. But he's just lost that. I've, I've not seen him. Actually, he did it in the last match, to be fair. Salah should have scored from it. Well, I've not seen him do that like pretty much all season. G- genuine question. Can you name the last time you like throughout th- this season? Can you can you name you can count on one hand how many good matches he's had? And even include last season as well. And I think uh, so. yeah. He was good against Everton. I remember that's the last match I can remember explicitly. He was good against an Everton. He scored a left footed shot from the edge of the box. I don't know if that was this season or last season, but but really clutching at straws if we're trying to find that. After I'll let you jump in on Henderson. Where do you kind of fall on that? Captain Fantastic. Captain Fantastic. How are you not saying this about Hendo? Hey, take 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 away the the man, you know. You don't you don't do that realistically, but take away know, him as the leader. I know that his ability is not like it's not amazing. He's not mm-hmm. amazing. But people like him, you don't get them a lot. Mm-mm. Like you don't. You can't buy leadership. You can't buy that mental strength. All the behind the scenes, you can't buy that. Trust me, you can't buy that. Hendo might not be the amazing stepovers or vision or that. We don't. We don't expect that from him. I understand that his time's gone. He can't press as much as before. Like he's getting older. I understand that. But we can't get let go of Hendo. Captain Fantastic. We can't let go of Hendo. Wow. No. no, no. I, I want to, so Henderson is an interesting one, you know, obviously he will, he will continue to be a, a discussion point until he has a lesser role. And so I, I hope that these signings mean that he has a role in the squad, but less of a role in the interrule matches week in, week out. If we sign more than two set of mids, this team's not going to, we need to, like, if we just put everyone in the middle, mm-hmm. we're just going to break down. Like, we can't let, we can't just start all these guys straight about, about. Like, if we put McAllister in, we're going to start McAllister on the left. Then, what, we're going to bring someone else, like, two Ram or someone else, start him on the right, then Fabinho or something. It's going to be too much. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We can't change this team too much, like, too much, too quick. I think we're in a spot where we really can't afford not to, though. We're going to be like Chelsea. We're just going to get so many ah, individuals. That's that's a different scenario. That's, that's like, the extremist of extremes. We're going to get so many individuals. And people are not going to know what they're going to be doing. Um, I'm trying to debate. If, we'll talk about Trent right now. Because the comments have been a, a heated debate that I've been kind of just enjoying watching <laughs> about Trent Alexander-Arnold and the right back. So he, he plays the right back. But in this new system, he kind of inverts in to play next to Fabinho and almost a midfield pivot. And it's then it's a three back, three defender back line and two in the midfield with Fabinho, whoever this defensive mid, and, and Trent next to him. Some people have, have translated that into believing that we need to sign a right back and move Trent into the midfield. Before I go on a deep rant, does anybody, am I going to offend anybody like here in person? Like if I talk about Trent, does anybody believe Trent could be a midfielder? You do, FJ. No. Well, let's separate. Could, could be a midfielder and do you want the system to translate to him doing that? No. I like this draw. It's a very draw. Yeah. And so he's not, he's not playing as a midfielder. He's not. He's a right back that inverts into the midfield. And if you're upset with his defending as a right back, you want to move him into the midfield, it, it's going to collapse. I'm telling you, Trent, he could play as a midfielder with a lot of development. He played it there in the, at the youth level. But look at the way he creates. 
he doesn't he's not great at receiving the ball with his back to goal and like turning and pivoting yeah. he doesn't have the, that mastery of angles he is so much better with the entire pitch in front of him when he receives the ball like a quarterback yeah. like a quarterback in american football where they're not having to receive the ball and then turn or anything they just have all of his options in front of him Wonderful. and he can just spray it so i think you, you move him in as a right center mid like i saw a comment um about De, comparing him to de bruyne like would you stick De bruyne at right back like you wouldn't play him there because you're ruining his attacking talent but De Bruyne is not Trent. Trent De Bruyne is better than Trent as a midfielder and as a player I would argue because he's got more things in his locker he's capable of receiving the ball deep and then carrying it forward Trent can do that maybe passably well but he's not most class at it like De Bruyne is. so when you completely transform the way his game is played where he has to defend in the midfield he has to receive the ball at different angles play different types of passes you maybe he could translate. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's got that in his locker. But I don't think we've seen enough evidence for that to be happening. So try it. We'll, we'll try it. No, no. We we we, we have unlocked an unbelievable system potentially with Trent as the inverted right back. Yeah. Why would we change it? We buy players to to support that. In my opinion, mm-hmm. he is the fulcrum point that you build your team around for the next five ten years. Because I don't see how teams can defend against that too realistically. Because like you you can't press Trent. At the halfway line, like you, like De Bruyne, you can press him because you have numbers to support him defensively yeah. when he's attacking you. But when Trent can be a threat 50 yards from goal, you can't really press that because then you stretch the team so much. Mm-hmm. So that kind of talent is so unique that you play him there and you, you, you take the bad with the good. He's one-on-one, he can be a bit suspect and positionally he can be a bit suspect defensively. But you're talking about a potentially all-time great passer, creator right back that's changing the game i'll, I'll end my my rant there um we didn't get on the elliott premier league loan that's a fascinating idea i don't think it should happen i think he's either he is what he is you know we either oh, make him work harvey is not a center mid he's not he, he is not a center mid from fulham he's fulham not a right winger he's a wi- oh my God. if people knew harvey before he came to liverpool he's not that like club's just trying to change him into this Center mid role, but before he came to Liverpool, he was wow. What would wow. you do though at Liverpool though? Because you got Salah in what I would imagine is the ideal spot. I oh, know that's the sad thing about it. That's the sad thing about it. We've got two yeah. great talents in Elliot and Carvalho, and I'm not sure if the squad really supports either their development here. No, the tactics don't fit their the yeah. development at all, and that's the sad thing about it. But they're amazing players, they're amazing players. Let's dive into the next one. I think that we have one or two more. This is from the Anfield Fix or Anfield Fix. Some names here that I don't recognize. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to try and give some, like, like uh, Kev, give me your deep analysis of Leandro Morgala from Germany. Give me your deep <laughs> analysis of his game and the pros and cons. <laughs> there, there, there are people out there who know a lot more about this stuff than we do. And we're not going to sit here and claim to be experts any of these guys. Levi Colwell, I think, is a really interesting option. Um, Schoberslai showing up there again at the very bottom. McAllister as well. Yeah. Um, some interesting options. Chua Meni's on that list. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's even possible, but like, is there a better defensive midfielder out there that we, unless we like throw just a blank check in front of Madrid and say, what will it take to get our guy part two? Um, <laughs> take him on loan. The thing is, though, it's a dream window, isn't it? So Levi yeah. Colwell, he's he's on loan at Brighton from mm-hmm. Chelsea. So Chelsea need to need a fire sale, don't think so. You know. The Chelsea garage, did we go round and ask them how much do you want for Levi Colwell? I think he's a good player. Too, too many. Wow. I, I'll be honest. That I, his, his lack of game time at Real Madrid is would make me get Shamat to go over there and try and get him on a loan deal or, or something like that to just try and see if he would be tempted. If you can tempt him away, then yeah, I'll be all in for that. Defo. Get him on a loan, see if he can just get convinced by the nightlife of Liverpool. You know, <laughs> I'm going to stick here. I, 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 I'll be honest, if you've got Ibu in the team and you've got Toram and you've got Tuchemeni, you've got possibly the, the young the young, the young lad, the young star of the French, of the French, of French football. Yeah, it's so I, it's, it, it's, it's, it's worth a shout. Do you know what I mean? I, mm-hmm. it, it's, it'll do no harm in asking. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it, he's, he's lacked the minutes. He's questioned the, the minutes that he's been played. So why not try and try and 
law them away if Real Madrid are willing to listen. If they're willing to listen, don't get me wrong, it's going to be hard because Real Madrid don't play nice ball uh, anything. Do you know what I mean? So you are going to be paying over the odds and they'll be expecting something similar to the amount that they paid. But if you can entice them away, I tell you what, <laughs> can you imagine shooting your many and tall? I mean, as as you as you as you two pivot sixes cover them for cover them for Trent at right back. Wow. <laughs> that, that's some steel right there. That is some steel. Um, you mentioned the, the, the young French trio potentially there, Kanate, Turam, Tuameni. There's also the Dutch side that we've been rumored. So you got Cody Gakpo just brought in recently, Jurian Timber, and another guy linked, Cody, um, not Cody, um, Ryan Gravenberch. Mm-hmm. Which side, this may be a bit of a, a, a very easy <laughs> answer. Which, which side are you going to go in? The Dutch <laughs> youngsters? <laughs> or are you going for the French youngsters? I feel like I've kind of walked myself into a corner. Where I'm trying to convince us to talk down to a many. Kev, are you going <laughs> Dutch or French in that instance? I I just get them all on the pitch, and whoever wins the the, the game, that's who we're going with. No, um, I, I I don't know. I, I, I I've liked two too many, so I'd have to go with the French side. Unfortunately yeah. for me, I don't think you go wrong with the Dutch side um, in the slightest. But... Either a good, either a good. You know. Yeah, Anthony. Um, anything for you on maybe you're just like you, you're really plugged in to like low level German soccer, you know, a lot of <laughs> this more guy. Do you have any thoughts on, on this window potentially uh, on this side of things? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not so plugged in, sadly, but yeah, too many bring him in, man. Honestly, I can't see Ramadan letting him go, but him, Turam, McAllister, that, that midfield three, best in Premier League history in, in my eyes. <laughs> no, give, give it a few years, give it five years. Yeah. That'll be so solid. <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the others on that list, uh, Cole Will, like I said, I'd, I'd take him. Too many McAllister, but I, I don't know if anyone else. Will. Uh, my input's quite low on this one, but yeah, too many, too ram. And I'll take the French side as well, over that mm-hmm. Dutch side. Yeah. FJ, any thoughts for you on this? I've got, I've got a question, though. How much are you guys paying for too many? 100 mil, 100 mil. 800 mil. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, yo, what? Think about it. Hang on. Yeah, oh, easy. They want the I, same I, amount back. They want the, the if they're letting them go, they they're not letting them go for anything less than what they've than what they bought them for. But why Let's do you see. think he's not playing for them? There's a reason why he's not playing for them. There's a reason why. Yeah, because they, they've got both it's because Car- Carlo and they've is got Modric, Cruz, Balverde, or all, all these guys, but he's so good. I, I, yeah, exactly. And, if Jude the, goes there, I think it'll be easier for him to leave. If Jude goes there, it might be easier. Definitely yeah. would be. But they paid 80 million euros for him last summer. They're going to want at least 100 million if they're going to move him on. At least 100. And if not, like maybe like we want 50% of what we paid and 120 million euros. That's and crazy. so then they're signing and bailing him for about 100 million and then they're selling true money for about 100 million. So I think he'd be got, brilliant. Sorry, too. hang on. Sorry. They only got him for 80 million euros. Was that only? According, <laughs> according to the transfer market. There could be additional fees that haven't been kicked in yet, but um, that's what the the transfer according to transfer market. So it could be slightly different, but okay. that is what we're seeing there. So um, and this is all comes down to killing Mbappe again. Like this is all like you know, if he had just joined Madrid, like he was supposed to last summer, they would have signed him. We could have signed Chua many. <laughs> <laughs> He better rectify it all by just joining us. <laughs> let, let me toss in my dream, my dream summer window. Sell Luis Diaz, sign Kylian Mbappe. That's my dream. That's my <laughs> dream. dream. Wow. <laughs> but I'm being realistic, you know? Like <laughs> Diaz and Mbappe couldn't coexist. But imagine that front three. You got Darwizzi down the middle, and they got Salo and Mbappe flanking him. Is Darwin in your dream? Darwin in your dream? In your dream? Darwin's banging forty in this dream as well. So like, the, the, this is a big pie <laughs> dream. Here. So that that's my dream that I jumped in there. I think it's been roundly rated quite badly. And this is the last one we've got on here. This is John O'Sullivan's dream summer window. FSG sell the club. Um, where do we fall on FSG in this group here? I mean, I, I haven't talked to you about it, FJ, but where where do you fall for them? Let's see what they do this summer. Let's see what they do this summer. There's no point complaining because they're not going to go this summer anyway. So let's see what they do this summer. I'm seeing that there, there's so many people we're linked with. It doesn't mean nothing here. But we've got McAllister. I think so. We're going to go get McAllister. And let's see how much left FSG can give us. 
So yeah, let's see what they give us for the rest of the summer. But we need the right players. They can give us so much money, but if we don't get the right players, mm-hmm. don't panic. Like I think Nunes was a panic buy. He's a panic buy. Don't panic. Relax. Start early. We've got Europa. Start early, build a team, then boom. You know? But yeah, let's see what they do for us this summer anyway. Yeah. Kev, FSG, are you where do you kind of fall on that that spectrum of things? I apparently? totally agree with FJ. Um I think this has mounted up over the last two seasons to a point where Jeez. if this isn't on on point this season with these transfers, there'll be a and we fall dramatically down the league, then you'll see a lot of people not happy. We've heard it time and time again of this next summer we'll be doing this, but it always comes with the terms and conditions that are in Willy Wonka, which you can't actually see. <laughs> but until you get the magnifying glass up, it's always based on Liverpool getting into Champions League football, which we've missed this season. So, unfortunately, we don't spend the big money. Maybe next season. And we hear this, and then, you know, COVID comes around at the same time as we win the league and stuff. It's hard. It's hard at the minute um, for uh, to see anything other than people be fully screwed. I- I'll be honest, it's the first time under their uh, under their leadership you're going to see a lot of people scrutinising who they're bringing in. And it's been brought on themselves. They forced it upon themselves. Whether it's down to Klopp as well as part of that, or whether it's on FSG as well. There's there's a mixture of everything of, you know, staying too, too, um, too close to players and, you know, trying to to get the most out of a gag and pressing team that's aging as well. So there is a bit of that the, that factor. But FSG have brought, uh, as I say, you know, they come out to start the season asking for an investment. We, it's a bit like a child. You you go to your dad and you, you give them the Christmas present of what you want and they go, well, yeah, well, we'll look into that. And then it comes to the end of the season and we still got the four core team outside and the Ferrari's nowhere to be seen. So we'll just need to see what happens for me. Anthony, for you on Fenway Sports Group and their manager of Liverpool. Uh, Fenway Sports Group. I think that their time's gone. To be honest, like when I saw that they were up for sale, I, I was happy early in the season, just because I think it's just been way too many summers now where they're just simply not invested in this team. And um, but like, th- there's fair points. Like FJ said, like, <laughs> what can we actually do as fans? There's no point in really <laughs> mourning about it. Just just hope for the best. And like Kev said as well, um, lost my trailer for. <laughs> What did Kev say? <laughs> uh, I don't know I don't, myself, mate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where you're going to head with it. Just kind oh, of... sorry. No, no. Um, like, it's not just them at fault as well. Klopp's Klop there as well. Like, I think throughout the season, numerous times, is poor substitutions, poor decisions in the transfer window, like spending 85 million on, on Nunes, he's kind of unproven. Not saying that's going to completely be a flop. He could be good next season. So hopefully that one proves us wrong. But stuff like Artur on loan on the, on the last day, you, Club, club legend, forty minutes played. Honestly, awful. That 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 must be the worst loan deal in history. Fourteen minutes played it is is abysmal. But even even just that, like it's up there with John Michelle the... Fedding. Uh, I'm not really too to to clue <laughs> upon that. But uh, but what what was there after we won the Premier League? John Henry said, "Oh yeah, we're going to invest this summer. We, we, we signed Adrian and Seth Van Den Berg. Season after we signed Thiago Jota, but." There's clearly clearly a missing out in, in defence depth when we let Lovren go. And <laughs> lo and behold, I, I genuinely believe, or still to this day, I think, could have won the Premier League easily that season if we had just signed two centre-backs. And obviously it's easier said than done, but we, we could have done it. And and that could have been an extra title to the club's name. And I think we're, we're having too many of these seasons where it's like, Liverpool almost done it, Liverpool almost done it. But in 10 years' time, nobody's going to remember us because we only won one Premier League and one Champions League. I already, I already forget. Actually, did I get your thoughts on FSG? Okay, good. Um, wraps up that the slides there. Thank you, everybody, who replied on Twitter with those things. Let's wrap the stream up with our dream transfer windows. Does anybody have kind of one almost offhand or ready? Or does anyone want to kind of kick us off? Uh, are you saying dream realistic or dream? <laughs> like dream, dream. So obviously, like, <laughs> dream is like somebody says, yeah, Phillips, he might be the next Van Dyke. 80 million. <laughs> That's like the dream, but like, if you were given the keys, maybe a better way to say, you were given the keys, the same budget, a realistic budget, realistic players who would want to sign for a Europa League Liverpool at the current state, what would you be doing? Just have to be complete. But any any thoughts currently for you, Anthony? 
Oh, I think t- the 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 links recently are good. Tiram and McAllister. I wouldn't mind Timber just because, like everyone said, he, he he's versatile as well. Kounde. So I think we need two defensive options, three minimum three midfielders. I I think we'll be pushing it at four, but um I think we do need four just because the depth and quality isn't isn't too good. And maybe a, an extra forward, but I don't think four was a necessity. So yeah, but players wise, Turam, McAllister, Kounde. Timber. Who else is there? Graven Birch would be kind of cheap, and then maybe that's about it. Yeah. So you got, you got five guys coming in there. Anybody going out for you? That's a notable departure that hasn't already. Don't left. say his name. Don't say his name. That, he. I don't. I can't see him going in here. Like I said, but. <laughs> man. Yeah, this is your dream. You know what? Nick's all come out with it. <laughs> all right, Henderson. <laughs> 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 uh, no. Okay. <laughs> When the rumour is about Jota going for 70 mil, I, I'm totally yes. against that one. I'm totally against that one. Against? Yeah, I think he's he so does. good. Uh, if it weren't for his injury, he'll be so, like, he'll just be world class. But I'm sorry, Anthony. You, you, you throw 70 million pounds on the table in front of me, I am gobbling that up, and I'm spending that on... Look, to, to be fair, I, I think I'm guilty of, like, feeling attached to certain players who I can't let Jota... Yeah. Like, like I was with Keita. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great let talent, him go, man. Let him great go. talent. But I think we we can let him go and really upgrade in spots that are much more sorely needed. We would need to replace him, obviously, and he would be a tough guy to replace because he is he's up there with the best finishers in the world, honestly. You know what? Neymar's in the transfer market, so seventy mil for Jota. Bring in Neymar. Uh, <laughs> no, not to wait. That that's a that's yeah, a serious guy. change of tactic there. Get that guy from my team, man. <laughs> FJ for you. Um, dream window could be individuals, could be kind of more of a structure based thing. I need what I need Klopp to do. When I sleep and cover myself in the sleep, I dream for my team to come back. Oh, we need the legs. Bring in Turam. Bring in the playmaker. McAllister. Bring in the Big Mac. You know, we need these two in the middle. They're one more defender. You know, just in case Van Dyke. Gets injured like I can't believe. You see the the worst injury I've seen is Pickford and Van Dyke. What kind of injury was that? Well, Alfield, Pick, just in case anything crazy happens like that again, we need a new centre back. You know, then maybe for doing the new tactics, Robo, tada! I love you though, man. I like you, Robo, man. All the heart. I think Robo is a very like like he's a like defense of his heart. You know, you know what I mean. So when he like so many crazy like. Pressing for the Real Madrid. He doesn't defend if he's... Our left-back and our right-back can't defend. We have to admit it. Our left-back and right-back can't defend. But I love them both, you know. But anyway, Robo, see you later, man. 35, 40 million. I love you, Robo, man. I loved you since Hull. I loved you since Hull. When I saw you at Hull, I loved you since then. Then we said, you know what I mean? Then we cool. Then, yeah, just get a new left-back. That can do the centre-back. Then, yeah, just three, four signings. Just three. I don't want too much signings. Don't want, don't want two new people in the no, just three, four signings that are good for next season. Top four. I'm not even gonna say we're going for the league. I'm not even gonna say that because our team needs to jail. Top four. Kev, for you. Your dreams well, in the window. My dream, right? Would be Casado. Ooh, how much? Say the price. Casado Kase- with add ons 90. It's fair. I'd then, I'd then I, I, obviously McAllister's coming in. I'd have, I'd have Gravenberg, if if not him. Um, I'd have Timber to come in. I would sell Robertson, bring Alfonso Davis in. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Then, <laughs> if I'm selling Jota, I bring Ozerman in from Naim from Napoli. Oh, shit, man! From you, Napoli. You, you, you said I've. Not seen enough I, number nine to flop. I, <laughs> I want another Darwin. Stick Darwin and Osaman and no goals. No goals, just vibes. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that's crazy. Do you guys think Nunes is a flop this season? Uh, no, this season definitely. 15 goals this season is not a flop in my eyes. He's he, just not he, playable, though, I think. He, he's put, he, he doesn't give you much confidence. The, the problem is he needs to sort his feet out at times because there's a few swingers that he's done in, in, in oh. games I've watched where you just go, wow, how, yeah. how's that happened? Yeah. He, 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 his, his brain's running faster than what his legs are. <laughs> it's kind of like what I'd be doing if I was playing on the clock. Um, but there, there is definitely a play there. 
Um, he's not a flop. I think he's come in at the wrong wrong time. I don't think he's the nine that we wanted. Yeah, I think he's left or in the middle. Yeah, it, 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 he's more left, isn't he? Because the more the goals at Benfica came from the left hand side, and he oh, yeah. always harbors to the left hand side for me. Well, for, for what I see from for Mike for Mike sees every week, he's like. But 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 that's the question, yeah. Are you taking Diaz at left wing and Jota at left wing? Egg, or, or well, you know? exactly, and and, and, and that's the conundrum you have. But Nunez, he's a striker that drifts everywhere, and he loves to drift on the right. So when that season he had a crazy season at Benfica, he played against us and he was causing us trouble. He's yeah. like I, I reckon that just give him one more season up front, let him get used to it. Like, but he got so much pressure. There's too much pressure for him now to 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 be like for me. In my strongest three up front, he's not in there. In my strongest three up front, he's not in there. I I'm think with- that it justified, justifiably so that he's not in your front best front three because like look at what Gakpo's been doing with his link up. Yeah, it's changed the way we play. Changed it. But, but wait, 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 let me hear this. What's your top? What's your front three yet? What's your front three yet? Diaz, Gagpo, Salah. Go, 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 Kev. Mine. Yeah. Salah. Um. Same as Jack. Diaz, Gagpo. Okay, go let me let me hear this. Oh, uh, no, I'm torn on Jack actually. But I, just said I, I wouldn't sell him for 70 mil, <laughs> but <laughs> it can't be a bench format. <laughs> nah, Salah Diaz got far as well. What, what are you then? Are you, are you in agreement or are you disagreeing? You know, Jota is actually a 20 goal season player. No, off the bench, rotation guy. Talk about City. City. Wait, 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 uh, here, know, here's, here's my my benchmark for best midfield. Salah is Jota's goal scoring. Yes, he's not going to get the same amount of goals. Nunes, Nunes and Diaz goes together. It might not be. To be just... fair, FJ, you are right there with, with with Diaz. I think the problem with Diaz's weakness, which he has to improve on next season, is his goal scored. His end product is shocking. Exactly. You, you know what? Jota's just injured too much. That's why I think if he stayed fit full season, hundred percent, he, he's in my best front three as well. Ahead of probably Diaz. I'll, I'll take Gakpo in there because he's so good. Gakpo. In front of Jota. Jota uh, ahead of. Jot J- a left wing, get Paul sent forward, and then Salah, obviously. I think the issue that I find with with Jota and Nunez is that they really can't play through the middle with Salah and the left wingers that they want to play. Diaz is the only one who can play on the left wing with someone through the middle, like Nunez or, or Jota, because he actually can not create from out wide, not saying that Salah can't in the slightest, but he's got a dribbling element and a creating element that Jota and Nunez don't have. They're finishers if they play out there. Now we're getting McAllister in, doing the Trent and Vergnes. We're going to trust me. Nunez, the Iba ha- Oh, my days. Gakpo, I love Gakpo. He, 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 when Gakpo came, he got better as time went. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As Gakpo came, he got better as time went. But he's not getting you 15 plus. You don't think. Is getting you 15 plus. Gakpo's got seven, I think. Seven in the first. Like, scored like 30 in. goals this season. He, like, he, he had 20 season. goals, 20 assists. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? Jota, <laughs> okay. If you had to put 100, you know me, your life on the line, you'll put the Jota at Gakpo. Who's going to get you 20, 15 plus a season? You're going for a both footed, both footed Portuguese guy. Hmm. I'd say I put Jota in there, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think my biggest thing that I can say in support of Jota is that he doesn't need minutes to get up to speed yeah. or to start scoring goals again. Not like in terms of coming back from injury, but just you can keep him on the bench for two matches and he can come on in the 60th minute of a match and then score one. You know, he, he, he is a great – if, if you have him as a bench warmer, Anthony, it's hard to do that financially if you get a big bid to keep him like that. But he really would be a phenomenal – Guy off the bench, like like just as seventieth minute comes on, can be a threat. A I'm, I'm gonna add, yeah, it's it's a, such a nice problem to have up front, yeah, compared to our midfield. Oh well. god, yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> unbelievable. 
the options we've got up front and the flexibility within that front in those from five or six that we've got is unbelievable. And we can play and, and there's a lot of versatility in there. Gapo's proven that he can play anywhere across that front three and fall in deeper if if required to. So there's a lot of versatility in there. I think the reason why I have Jota not starting in me starting at the front three, FJ, is because of his injuries and the in- how prone he is to injuries he has been this season. Otherwise, there's no disagreeing. He knows where that Ness is, and he knows where that Ness is more than what Diaz does. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's the weakness that Diaz has and has to improve on next season because it's not like this season where there's hardly anyone there who next season there will be options and he'll be spending more time on the bench if he doesn't start finding assists and goals. He needs that goal threat. We've only seen glimpses of his Palace at home. You know what I mean? Before his injury, where he, he takes five on and then puts it in the bottom corner. We need more of that, but he needs to, he's not going to score many goals like that. He needs to find a way of scoring in the box, a bit like Jota has found, for me anyway. But, he, needs to you know, come back. he needs to come back and do what he was doing when he came on January. Every exactly. time, he, oh, that, wow, wow, like direct, like straight at the, you know yeah. what I mean? Straight at the, Definitely. his end, like his end part is crazy, like. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go bar line, cut it back, or are you gonna like come back, like cut back and go start again, go left back, or are you gonna try and whip it in? Like if if when Money had the ball, you knew what Money was gonna do. And everyone knows what Money, you know, you know what Money's gonna do. Diaz, anyway, next season, we'll see what he's got for us next season. Because he had a bad injury this Definitely. season. He is a stop on start, start. But we need 10-10 minimum. Like minimum. Like for Liverpool, we need 10-10 minimum. Mm-hmm. If you don't get ten to minimum, you're useless. Like, re- like, honestly, honestly, it's really for me, Jota and Nunez. It's tough because to have two of your key forwards when you really can't see them coexist in the same eleven, it's tough to manage that and rotate that because it feels like with it's just awkwardly placed. You hope that maybe with the midfielders you sign, maybe you could tinker with the formation. Maybe you could play two up front. Maybe you could play four up front. I know that there were thoughts about that playing Gakpo, Nunez, Diaz, and Salah when he first signed, which I think is very possible, where you play Gakpo as almost an eight himself. So there are a lot of options, a lot of room for potential improvement. I think Nunez, he's got another year for me. You know, you would have liked to see, you would have liked to see him hit the ground running, obviously, for the price you pay. But you saw it happen. At uh, what was the club before Benfica? Was it Tenerife? Was that who we played for before he played for Benfica? I forget oh. who it was, but um, who it was a second division Spanish side, whoever it was. It's going to bug me, but I'll look it up at some point and then I'll remember what it was. It took him a year to bet in, it took him a year, and then he launched from there. So you can't just like hope that he turns it around like for three, four years. Like we, we did with Keita, we were like held on. Anthony and I, we held on hardcore, hoping that Navi was going to turn it around one day. And he had the tools, he had the skill, but it just, the luck wasn't there. So look, there's a lot of room for improvement and optimism. But what's fascinating to me is that the forwards, the system, the forwards exist the way they are. That Those five, it's great, great options. I don't think you need to sign a forward to me. My dream window, we kind of got derailed from that a little bit. Um, I agree, FJ. If you can sign one or two guys, honestly, what I would my, my crazy overhaul would be you move on. Just before you saw it, Jack, it was Almera. That's what it was. Thank you. I don't know who played for Tenerife, but Almera, that is definitely who it was. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, I, I, it actually has a weight off my mind now. If my absolutely crazy blow it up summer, sell both the left backs, Simikas and Robertson, <laughs> sell Fabinho. Move him on because you're splashing the cash on Declan Rice as your six. He's like transforms you for the next decade. He's the big signing there. McAllister, obviously, in the midfield. I would get Turam. I think he'd be a great signing there. But oh, then I think you have to oh, you go ahead. Are you happy with McAllister? I need to be proven. I don't think there's anything that could. I, I, I think that he is the kind of signing like a Winaldo almost, where it's like, he has got the tools and he's got the capabilities. Um, I haven't seen it personally, but I'm not going to sit here and question it. 58, if it's for 58, 60 million pounds for him, that's pretty standard in this market for a guy is who's played like him. Tax? Is that World Cup tax? or Definitely is. Definitely, <laughs> definitely is World Cup tax. And the fact that they're also in Europe. Um, 
we're probably paying him a fair chunk of change in terms of wages as well. I, I think that I would be happy with him. I think he's got a lot of room for improvement and growth. And he's, he's starting. He's, he's starting. Well I think your entire squad is transformed. I think that I've got – I would love to go for Levi Colwell as that – Left center, left back, left center back, bringing Gonzalo Ignacio, who could also play in that role. So you basically get rid of your left backs and sign two center backs who can play at left back. Um, Cole is part of that starting lineup. Rice in the midfield who would just be unbelievable. Um, <laughs> McAllister and Thuram. So you've got four guys changing in that starting 11, um, but it's your four main acquisitions. Yeah. Maybe try and sign a grab and birch one more, one or two more guys, just add depth. Like Timber would be a great like almost Milner replacement in the sense that he can play in a lot of positions. You can just plug him in some spots. He could play as a left back where he kind of ducks into the inverted role. So that would be my dream. I don't think we're going to sign Declan Rice. I think that's just a bit too, too out there, too much out there. Um, but man, he would be, he'd be a leader. He would be just like the, the thing you build around for the next decade. He's in my opinion, one of the best defensive midfielders in the world. Whoa. At his young age. Declan, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Rodri, know. him, Casemiro is a good outright defensive midfielder, but he lacks a lot of the skills Declan Rice has. He's a great destroyer. Rice still destroys, but he also has got some yeah. more in his locker. Yeah, more crazy talent. And he's young, crazy talent. I don't know about that, Jack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't about like, that. Top team, man. Good to see the boy, Chris. Ah. <sighs> Defensive, I mean, I box to box, defensive mid. I, I, th I think you, you, every player could be better elsewhere. Um, <laughs> I just want to bring up this comment. I wanted to mention Chedu. I don't know, Kev, were you around when Chedu was around? I'm not sure if you were. I'm not too Kev. sure. I was. He was, I think it was he was for me. Maybe. He was very early days, but he will go viral on Twitter sometimes for having the dumbest dream windows and people just believe that he thinks it's serious. <laughs> we'll have like Nat Phillips for 40 million and then it'll have all these signings. So I'm glad you <laughs> shot that, shot that, shouted that out. <laughs> I think every player like Rice is talented enough that he could play higher up the pitch. Caicedo could play higher up the pitch, but because the better. defensive midfield he's role. Better. He's better. Who's better? Rice. Uh, Rice. I think who's so. better? Next. Who's better? Let me hit next. Who's better? Kev, who's better? Declan Rice or Caicedo? I'd have to go Casado myself personally, but I think Wright has got it in his locker. Anthony, or wait, Anthony, oh. <laughs> who do you think, Casado or Rice? I'd say Casado as well. Yeah. I think well, you have to find a for him. Different level, you know. Look with is crazy level. with Rice, you could play in box to box, right? But they're different. They're different. And they're I think different. on an individual level. He would be better, but I, I think as a team, he makes you better at defensive mid. Who? Rice. Rice. No, 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 not, not like I say, like I say it. I'm saying Rice box to box versus Rice defensive mid. Um, I think that you play him in that role. He's like, he does everything Fabinho can do, but he's much more progressive and he's much more capable in possession of the ball, yeah. which would transform us because Fabinho in his prime was a great destroyer. And we don't need someone as, as silky or as capable as Rice or Caicedo to play that role. Like even Ugarte could do that. He's got progressive yeah. elements to his game, but he can destroy things. Yeah. yeah. I think Rice would be great because he has, I think, a lot of room to also put him in different spots. You know, like I, I, I think that he could eventually move to a box to box if we maybe by Chetic comes up. He's not going to be even talked about once. Maybe he comes up as a better defensive mid than eight or vice versa. Mm. That versatility is good. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. well, let's get an over under on signings this summer. Three and a half. Kev, are they going to be over or under three and a half signs? Either four or three or whichever direction. <laughs> I don't, I kind of over explained <laughs> over and under right there. Over under I, three and a half signings. I think it'll be over. It has over. to be over. Are you including McAllister? Yeah. Yes, including McAllister. Including McAllister. Let's push it to four and a half. Let's push it to four and a half then. <laughs> um, I feel like three and a half is low. Like three feels like way too few signings because four are going. I'd say yeah, it is possible because if you're bringing in three midfielders and you're getting rid of at least one or two centre backs, and you're bringing in someone like of a Timber and a Gashio for uh, on the left hand side, then it could be over four. 
4.5, as you say, Jack. So I'm, I'd say yeah, because it's needed. I'd say over. Anthony, for you, over, under, four and a half. Uh, it depends. You know what? It depends, I think, if we sell players as well, because if we if we don't, I reckon it'll be maybe four, three or four maps. But if we do, then yeah. Who says on the fence, Anthony? Come on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> He's a hot. I do. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, you know what? Screw it. I hope they go out there, spend two hundred odd million, and uh, we, we, yeah, glad to know, but they're, they're new to though. They're new to, but like, not spent enough. Saying to spend two hundred million isn't crazy because that's an average of forty million pounds per transfer. And if you're not doing that, who are you signing? Like, are you signing some really odd like Sander Bergs from Sheffield United, <laughs> which is like a scary thought? FJ for you, over under four and a half signings. Over, over, because we need it. We need it. We need it. This, this transfer window, I think, be the last season. This is the biggest one. Yeah. I think this is going to be only under Klopp, only comparable to 2018, when it was Van Dijk in the in the, in the summer, winter, excuse me, and then it was Allison, Fabinho, Keita, Shakiri to kind of really transform that team. So hopefully, it's closer to that than it is to the 2020 window when it was Adrian, who's clearly going to be in front of the year, big four-year contributor to the club. <laughs> um, well, I hope that it's a bit different than that. So, Josh, and it, go ahead. Be, 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 before we go, we've had our new sport and directing for four hours. <laughs> and my God, he's he's been busy. He's been to Manfield. He's agreed to, to be Liverpool thing. He's gone over to Nice. So he's been talking about Torah. He's been over to Brighton. He's trying to get him McAllister over there. This boy has, has done a lot of business in the next four yeah. hours, hasn't he? He's, he's the one who's just he means business though, doesn't he? Does. He's ready. We need him. We need him. <laughs> go, ahead, Andy. go on, go on, man. Go ahead. Uh seven minutes ago from a very top source, Liverpool have entered the race for Moinch and Gladbach's Manu Kone. See? <laughs> 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 so I I'm I will be honest. I I, I think they're gonna we, we, I'll be honest. I, I I do think there are there are people on a list that he's going through now, and I I, I think he's coming at a, at the right time. It's a short term deal. Let's see how he does. I think it's perfect. But man, I tell you what, the quiet assassin is doing his business well. <laughs> if he if he brings these in, man, <laughs> he he's cooking. He is cooking. It's let, great. Him, let him cook. Let him cook. Let him cook. <laughs> Please. Breaking bad, there we come. <laughs> there we go. No, I, I think it, this is going to be kind of funny if, like, McAllister, Kone, Turam are all signed for the next two weeks. So out of the gates, bam, explodes like that. But it might be like Nunez last year, where Nunez was really early, and we're saying, all right, what's next? And then they're saying, what's next? That's it. Like, we're done. No. <laughs> so it might be something like that where we, we, we get yeah, it done I- early, which is good. Yeah. But then maybe we, we leave ourselves a little short. I don't know. I'm 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 really interested in that. Um, the last thing I'll mention is the Tyler Ad- Tyler Adams relegation clause. You know he's an American. You know, versatile guy. Played for Leeds. He's the captain of the United States men's national team. We need to get some soccer, some Ted Lasso vibes into our football <laughs> club. McKinney's better. McKinney's better. I think McKinney's better. Oh, no. They they <laughs> the, the the best midfielder actually in my opinion for the United States is neither of them it's Yunus Musa I think Yunus Musa is a baller playing for I want to say Valencia I think he's playing for oh, right okay, now. Okay, okay. he is a dog because I haven't watched him much at the club level but at the national team level he's much more progressive like if, that's, if it's a midfield trio it's like McKinney at the six Adams as the eight and then almost like an eight and a half ten guy is Musa so. Um, <laughs> Hey, no, it's it's. <laughs> I'm not saying soccer seriously. It's sarcastically, guys. It's sarcastic. Please just call him out. I would, I would, I would. Next time he does it. Next time he does it, I will call him out. Just someone remove it from the stream. It's like, oh, he's done. He's wrapped. <laughs> so, no, I think the. I don't. I, I would be surprised if we on like if we ever sign an American. Like I will go. No one will support a player more than I will support Please that see. player. Pulisic. But Jack, it, it, it goes back to Christian Pulisic when he was at Dortmund. You know, we, we've always we were always linked with 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 the golden child of of USA football, mm-hmm. and it's never really materialised the way the fans thought it would do under FSG. And I don't see it happening any sooner. With the investment, could, could be 
prominently cloaked. So, mm-hmm. I, 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 unless there's another American taking over in investment wise, and as and wants an American player there, but it's never been on. It feels as though FSC haven't really gone down that route, have they? No, and I mean we haven't really had a player that justifies that. To be honest, I think we're still waiting for that player who. What I always say when I talk to my friends here in America and they ask me, they ask me about soccer. I'm just gonna say soccer for the rest of the stream just to piss everyone. Off. <laughs> <laughs> when they ask me about like you know relegation or anything that that some of the stuff that we consider very inborn and natural to talk about, so I have to kind of describe a little bit. There, I'll, I'll explain that the reason why soccer isn't as big in America is because all of the top athletes go to basketball, they go to football, they go to baseball, and then maybe soccer. They're, they're kind of on the same tier with, with hockey, you know, proper football and hockey is kind of on the same tier right there. So your best athletes, like imagine LeBron James as a right back. Imagine Russell Westbrook playing as a box to box midfielder, you know, these otherworldly athletes, they'd be built differently because they're not playing basketball every day. They're playing football every day, but they would still be changing things a lot. So, and, and, and also it's costs an incredible amount of money in America for players to, to play the sport. So until someone really breaks out, maybe they might pull the trigger on that. FSG might, when they see an American player and they say, you could be the, the next generation, like of, of making soccer huge in America. Maybe they might pull the trigger there. Who's, the, pool big, sick. who's the biggest name that Americans had? Pulisic. Most talented guy we've ever had. Yeah. Well, is it Pulisic or is it... Reyna's of great talent. Like Landon Donovan and Clint Dempsey were great players back in the day. But they talent-wise, they weren't even anywhere close to Reyna or Pulisic, in my opinion. I think Kai Murray in the in the comments is on something. Um, kept sitting there <laughs> like, what is a Westbrook? And I totally agree <laughs> with him. <laughs> 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 Bro, he's a, he's a, I he's... didn't know I looked that much of a fraud, but thanks anyway. <laughs> I'm just naming basketball players like uh, Patrick Mahomes. Have you guys heard of Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I do watch the American football. Yeah. Okay, so he, football football players, basketball players, they can make the transition. But no, <laughs> Westbrook, I always say because he's a freak athlete, but he's a very odd one. I imagine to like for you guys to know if you're more casual basketball watchers. No, I'm a, I'm a proper, 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 proper basketball. What? Jimmy Buckets yesterday. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Jimmy Buckets yesterday. But I don't know if they're going to make it against Denver. I don't no, know. No chance. I don't know. But yeah, I'm an American fan as well. NFL, NBA, a big American fan. Big American. Like Victor Wembanyama. Have you guys heard of Victor Wembanyama, Kev, Anthony? Is he going to be? Is he going to be? Oh, no. He's this seven foot five prospect. He's crazy. He can shoot threes. He can dribble. He's he's a crazy different athlete. Imagine him on the football pitch. Where's imagine he, he imagine when Benyama, <laughs> seven foot five. Seven foot five. Yeah, but ba- basketball is not impressive. They're just throwing a ball into the oh, wait, don't... <laughs> oh, 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 Andy. oh my god, oh. you don't even I know you don't kill that. <laughs> you do not break like that, mate. It's not impressive. Oh my god. Uh. I had the clunk from the three yard line, eh? <laughs> So, uh, football's not impressive. I almost said soccer unironically there. Fo- football's not impressive. It's it's you're just scoring one goal a game and then you just run around for the rest of it. And chasing one ball. That's what they say. They say basically rich people football. That's exactly. yeah, that's when I hear that. What? Don't say that. Oh, but that's, no. yeah, that's what we watch. One person, one ball, everyone chasing it. I think the only big striker I remember was Germany or Carl and Janka up front. And it didn't kind of work because I think the, your body, when you get to that size, if you're over seven foot, it's you, you, you're not moving quickly, are you really, to be honest? I know the basketball is is a smaller court and stuff like that, but if, you, if you're asking for a player to play centre forward or, or midfield or centre half, I don't see there being much pace at all. And, and if there is, you're not lasting that long because I don't think your body can physically deal with that. But I tell you what, though, if you're seven foot five and built like Virgil van Dijk or Canute, wow, man, <laughs> I'll no, have you as we said to match. With, with Wembenyama, though, he's built like a twig. He has got no weight oh. on his, uh, no muscle on his on his body. He, he like, uh, we got this comment from, from Kai he's saying, you need to be, do you know who Giannis Antetokounmpo is, Anthony? Yeah, I... Hey, sorry. Gian, Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> he is, no. He's about six foot 11, built like a truck. 
he, 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 him playing, him playing would be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> because he can move. He's under seven foot, and he can move. His feet are definitely not, you know, anywhere up there. But no, it's. I love how we just kind of completely abandoned discussion of, of little <laughs> football club, and we're talking about what basketball players can make the transition well. You got in the finals. No, Go ahead, FJ. You got in the finals. Me? Yeah. Denver. Denver. I, I think it's yeah. not even going to be close. What, I see? live in. I live in South Florida, um, so it's been fun seeing folks like panicking about how they almost bottled a three nil, three nil, three zero series lead. But this is weird, like shifting of my brain, having to go from basketball to football. But I try not to call it soccer because I call it soccer. Yeah. Everybody else in America, it's, my brain's getting very confused. I call it three nil lead in the series. Um, I think Denver, Denver's going to cook them. They're rested. They're good. Sweet. I think it's going to be in like five or six. Five or six. They'll win a game. Probably at home, win a game at home or two, but nothing more. Yeah, so. no. Anyways, this was a great, fun hour, 40 minute stream. Um, really beginning <laughs> to dig into the transfer window, uh, kind of in our, in our deepest way here. So make sure you subscribe to the page, though, if you have not already. Follow us on all of our platforms uh, Twitter, Instagram, obviously here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. We'll try and do more cross platform stuff. FJ, great having you on your first stream here today. Congratulations. Uh, very long one. They're usually not this long. So well done making it this long. Kevin yeah. Anthony, thank you guys as always. I've been Jack for the Office Transfer Room. We'll catch you on our next stream or video. Take care.